Hey there guys and welcome to another episode of Hamilton Draws. Today I'm doing a caricature of Daniel Radcliffe, the uh, the actor who plays Harry Potter. In, uh, in case you don't know who Daniel Radcliffe is, he plays Harry Potter on the movie Harry Potter and the Harry Potter and the Harry Potter. Um, I'm doing a pretty crazy caricature of him today, and I, this time I thought that I would go through the whole process, so I started digitally and ended digitally, and, uh, the last two drawings I kind of did half and half. I did them first in pen and then brought it, scanned them in and showed you how to, how to take those scans and make them something you could use digitally, and that has its merits, but this time I thought I would go all digital, so right now... What I'm doing is trying to start out with a with a really rough sketch and and go from there and I'm going to try to talk through what all the types of things that I do. Now, it's worth mentioning I probably don't have the number one top best technique for a drawing, but this is a technique that works for me and uh it stems from the fact that I'm a pencil artist by trade. So I tend to start with lines and work from lines, and painting doesn't necessarily come natural to me, and that's all right if it doesn't come natural to you, because you can still work out what you're doing even if you're not naturally a pencil artist. But uh, from a pencil drawing, I have managed to sort of work out a means of rendering that feels to me very much like sculpting, actually. So... Here I am drawing, and I've, like I said, I've started out with a very thick brush. It was actually a chalk brush from the Photoshop preset brushes. And I did that just to lay in some texture, but as you're going to see later, uh, I end up smoothing that out with a round brush is what, I'm, is what I'm using right now, and I end up using that for basically the rest of the, of the whole drawing. And right now I'm doing it at about looks like about 50% opacity and that just allows me to draw not necessarily perfectly black every time but it allows me to throw in some some light shades every once in a while and get some variance when I'm drawing and here I am adding in a bit of a background it's just a really quick technique in order for you to then be able to add in shades to your image uh, to just have a have a light gray background in there and right now I'm working from a grayscale image and I'm gonna color it later uh, a lot of artists use this technique uh, to lesser or greater uh, success and I think it worked out pretty well for me this time and it's a technique that I've learned from other artists and I think it works out pretty good now like I said, you want to start out with a large brush on your first to go, and then as you go in, as you get further and further into detail, then you move, use a smaller and smaller brush as you go along. So your first pass is going to be with a really big brush so that you get really big shapes, and that way you can sort of block out the whole structure of the image, the whole structure of the character, if that's what you're drawing, and not have to worry about details in the beginning because your brush is too deep, too big to make details anyways. So even in this sort of middle step, I'm not really worrying about super fine details. What I'm really trying to do is block out major, major areas of color. And I'm just sort of smoothing them over. I've got a... I got my brush reduced down to about a 30% opacity, and that allows me to pick and choose uh, tones from the drawing that exists already and lay those down wherever I want them. So basically I hold down Alt to grab whatever color I looks appropriate at the time or whatever shade looks appropriate at the time. And then I just uh, lay it down and it allows me to layer in shades very, very lightly at first. And this is prob this probably produces a much slower result than is appropriate for a drawing of 
this type. This particular image took me about two hours to make. I believe this is sped up about eight times, which is okay. It's not bad. Um, it uh, it worked for me this time, but I could have spent another hour refining it at the end. But I was I was ready to be done, so I finished it up. There I am, adjusting some volume. Don't worry about that. Pay no attention to the volume being adjusted in the background. Now, because I started from a line drawing, there is a certain point where I started to basically sketch out the lines that I did and turn this thing into a full-on painting. If I had it to do over again, I would have kept my sketch layer on a sub-layer underneath and painted over it. But since I didn't do that, it's hindsight, and I can't worry too much about how I would have done it. All I can do is talk about how I did do it. And what I did do is I went down into one solid layer and just started painting in on a one la onto one layer. And what that does is it causes you... It causes a person like me, who likes to have things as non-destructible as possible, who likes to have all of their options open to them, it causes me to have to move forward because at that point I've taken out all of my avenues of escape and, and basically made it so that I have to, have to draw forward at that point. So it's actually a good thing for me because otherwise I would just sit there tweaking forever and ever and ever. Now it is at this point that I'm using the brand new uh, blend brush. See that? See that new brush I'm using? It's the fourth brush in Photoshop. It's a brand new tool. It's actually really amazing. If you haven't used it yet, you should give it a try. Um, it basically allows you to use the Photoshop canvas as if it was a real paint canvas and you can either use the brush to paint with a full color or just paint with the colors of the canvas itself. So it's basically like you can paint with your paintbrush or you can paint with like you were a paintbrush with with just water painting over a, an actual canvas, just grabbing up color that was already on the canvas. It's actually a really amazing tool that allows you to create some really smooth blends that weren't possible with the with the blur tool or anything anything that was quite available before. And uh, one of the things that happened when I was doing the initial initial shades was that when I did his neck, I wasn't able to get a real good solid color, and that's because beforehand I was doing everything with opacity, and at this point, I'm actually painting with solid colors. Even if that, even if my brush is opaque, I'm not painting with black opaques. I'm painting with that color opaques, and it allows me to. Uh, to really lay down this area better but what I ended up doing was at first I was trying to do this his neck with a smaller brush and what I realized was I actually needed to pull back uh, raise the size of my brush and just start thinking about it in in larger areas because it's not an area with that much detail I mean you could get detail out of it if you really wanted to but really it's just it's just large flat areas of color and so in that way um, it's I had to think about it more like it was back in the initial phase and just pull everything back and make everything bigger so that I could think in bigger terms in bigger scope and now it's at this point that I have moved past the uh, medium phase and I'm now moving into the the detail phase so I'm adding in little little things I'm getting more detailed with the painting and that's pretty much the phases that you should go through with a painting is that there's a big blocky phase where you just you lay out everything in as in as much so, in, a, in the biggest size brush you can get um, and try to see everything as shapes as opposed to details and then you go in with a, a second step where you start to initially increase detail a little bit but still not a lot and then your third step is to go in with an even finer brush and actually add in all of the all of all of the for real real details in the face and you could go another step you could go another two steps in fact um, if you were really super concerned about being detailed 
I wasn't su too super concerned with detail. I wanted this to be, well, relatively short. It actually took me a lot longer than I thought it would take. But this one was just kind of about fun, so it's all right if it took a little bit longer. Now, at this point, what I've done is I've added in a new layer that has a color blending mode of color. And this allows me to just lay in large swatches of color. And if you've ever seen an old black and white movie that's been recolored, this is basically the technique. Um, again, could have gotten a little more detailed, could have put in a little more color in a couple points, places, could have uh, perfected the color a little bit more. But really, all when the initial picture I used as reference only had a little bit of color on his face and a little bit of color on the rest of him, so I didn't feel too bad about leaving it at just a couple of highlights of color and basically just the rest of it was a regular um, shade of skin tone for the rest of him. And you can see right here I add in a little bit of uh, tone on the eyeballs. I did this by just uh, color picking the color from his eyes and just shifting it over to blue. It was actually the easiest probably edit I did. Um, here I've added in, I, I dropped down the initial color layer and merged it with the in, initial drawing and now I'm just putting in another layer to add in a little bit of a little bit of blue offset to his skin. When you actually get into the color theory of drawing, of painting people, you're going to find out that uh, if you just make people what, if you just paint people with a color that people don't really associate with skin, that the skin tone color, I'm, I'm doing air quotes right now, you can't see it, but I'm doing it. If you just paint people with that color, what you're going to find is they get a very unnatural tone, and that's because um, there's a lot of other blood colors in the skin other than just red, and generally speaking, when blood is flowing through the body, it's actually blue, and if you don't add some sort of blue or green to the body, to the skin tones, then it doesn't look as natural as a real body does. And it's one of the things that I struggled with for the longest time, and it's something you just kind of have to accept as an artist, is that you kind of have to throw in a little blue in there, a little, little green, a little, little purple every once in a while to make it look actually real, as opposed to not real. So yeah. I'm rounding it out at this point. Uh, in a second, I'm probably going to add a little blue to the background. And the reason that I'm going to add some blue to the background is because, um, again, color theory states that uh, having blue behind a bunch of, having a cool tone behind a red tone actually pops the red tone off of the picture. Um, I don't know why it happens, but it does. So if you're ever thinking to yourself, gosh, what should I put in the background? Just just throw some blue in there. It'll pop all of the natural reds and yellows out of the face and and just look that much better. So this is just a really quick drawing of Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.